Welcome to the Cray Podcast. With me I have Hiroyomi Katayama. And she's going to be exhibiting at the Cray from September 1st through uh, September 22nd. With the uh, grand opening on uh, Saturday, September 1st. And so welcome to the gallery. Thank you. I'm really excited and I'm really happy to be able to exhibit at the Cray Gallery. It's going to be awesome. I see you have a lot of experience in exhibiting already in your uh, young career. Yeah, I try. Um, <laughs> since I moved from all the way from Japan, I would love to um, uh, introduce about the Japanese painting as much as I could. Uh huh. Now, did you just start yeah. painting in Japan? Yes, I studied Japanese traditional painting when I was BFA um, at Joshibi University of Art and Design for four years. Uh huh. After I finished my Bachelor of Fine Arts, I came to the United States to study MFA in uh -huh. Edinburgh. Uh huh. So, what made you decide to come to the States and particularly uh, Edinburgh? Um, Edinburgh has the, the great English as a second language classes, which is um, obviously like uh, the English course for a foreigner to uh, start. And I, they had a great program. Plus, and great MFA, so I decided to come here. Oh, nice. I didn't know how much snow this place gets, though. Uh -huh. so, <laughs> so, did you pick up Western influences in your paintings uh, once you studied in Edinburgh? Yes, I, especially like a seasonal stuff, like since Edinburgh or with you know Edinburgh got a lot of snows and uh, the leaf color change in the fall with snow and those kind of like a nature related visual theme definitely influenced me. It's not necessarily something Western culture, but the, what I see, what I experience in America, uh -huh. I will. I would say this is my Western influence. Mm -hmm. So you you say the, so you mm -hmm. so you say you added uh, colors to your palette then as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh huh. Because I noticed some in your other work when I was looking at your website that there's some actually some fluorescence and uh, some quite vibrant colors. Yeah, it does. I, I didn't have so many um, bright colors before I came to the United States, even like first couple years uh -huh. in the United States. Um, it's just a lot of things I've been, even go to the Walmart, I went to the Walmart and see the so many bright color things. It just, it is different than the, what I see in United, uh, what I see in Japan. Uh -huh. Things are much more monotone, um, subtle in in Japan right. compared to America. Mm -hmm. So I'm for sure those, the things I see every day influence me a lot. Oh, sure. Can you describe the creative process you go through in, ter in terms of you uh, creating your work? I, I see the nature. I sometimes take a photo. I sometimes go online and uh, make the, my favorite photos, photos, and um, I self-study, I research the, what I like, uh -huh. and I make those photos, and I'm trying to figure out, oh, I like these things. It's just, I never know, I, let's say, I like the reflection, because I've been collecting a lot of reflection photos. And I realize, oh, I like reflection. If if I know I like reflection, if I go outside, I am much more paying attention for the reflection. Uh -huh. And the things I see in real life, that thing also I knew I like, it always inspire me. And sometimes I take photo right there. Sometimes I just bring my imagination or my memory right there. Uh -huh. In my studio, start making drawings, usually with watercolor, 
uh, pastels on the little scale, like six by eight or five by seven, something like that. And and then I will move for the bigger piece. That's how I create my painting. Uh huh. Do you sketch as well? Oh um, yeah, but not very often. I sometimes use uh, like many photos, like for the big piece, like Beyond Culture. I think I did use twenty or more pictures to make that top that one image for drawing. Uh huh. And after the drawing, I will, I usually not going back to the pictures at all. So it's more like the things in my mind, things on my hand, rather than the things I saw from outside.、Mm-hmm. This is a question I like to ask all the artists I interview.、Um, I mean, you're working with large panels, and your work is quite complex and How do you know when you come to a point where you're finished with your work? I don't know. This is the greatest answer, but the, my answer will be I'm pretty much exhausted. <laughs> Mentally and physically. Both, and、huh. I realize that the, oh, my painting took all of my energy. This piece is done. Uh huh. So when you work on a piece, you you work on it until it's finished, or you. Put it aside and go back to it later, and I don't go back later, usually. Uh huh. And um, very sometimes, like I just like it, and I it set like more than month at least, and I sometimes go back, but um, try to not go back because it never ends. Uh huh. And.、Um, I really like to create as much as I po- I, as much as I could.、Uh-huh. So if I keep going back, the other piece will never come up. So I've always wanted to have some fresh energy things going on for new pieces, rather than regretting past. So has your work evolved as you've、um, as you continue and going on the different subjects? You might be going、uh-huh. from more vibrant colors, or do you go to more subtle tones? Do you do you,、uh-huh. do you find that your work is evolving and moving in different directions? Yeah, it is always. Every every month, I have some change. Ah.、Uh-huh. As long as the you know people work, the working artists always have a change. I think, and. I don't even realize I'm changing something sometimes, but the, some my studio colleagues tell me, professor tell me, um, um, had a solo show and realized that the oh something has changed. So it is a lot of different ways to realize how much I change、mm-hmm. the little piece of my artwork, um. But the energy I put in for the pieces would never change. So, and sometimes I always felt like the since I'm painting nature, they are、uh, seasons always、uh, related with my painting. Like cold winter, I tend to have a, a white, a lot of like subtlety colors. Right. And then the, in the fall, I tend to have a lot of orange and the brown. So these always change,、mm-hmm. and、uh, it is hard. Like I've been talking in a in an artist statement, I've been talking about my culture difference and、um, the who I am as a Japanese, but I. Start understanding about American culture more than before, so I am trying to figure out. Like, probably I'm the the 
the position confusing between the Japanese culture and American culture, and that's quite different to different cultures. And I'm, I can't really say which is right, which is wrong, what is better, what is not. So, as a Japanese painter using Japanese traditional painting, but、um, appreciating American culture and enjoying American culture. So it's getting kind of confusing right now. It was easier before because I only knew about Japanese culture and everything I done in America was brand new and shocked me.、Uh-huh. But now I've been here for four years and getting know, getting understand about America much better. So now I can start thinking about. So why Japan do this way instead of America? I think America was better. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's always argument in in my inside of the mind. Oh sure. What would you like for the audience take away when viewing? Oh, I would like to send you、um, see my painting and、um, go to you and there. I don't know how to say. I want I want people to went into the, my painting. And swim around,、um, and if I, if it's possible, I would like to hear、uh, what did they want, what did they see from my paintings.、Uh-huh. It's always, always fun to hear what I, what they see from my painting. For example, that.、Um, Oh. Too future that blue,、um, second large screen. I'm gonna have. I'm having in Clarion, Clarion Gallery.、Uh, that piece.、And、some people say that they're watching from bottom bottom of the sea, and seems like they became a fish. Right. And looking up the outside. And some people say、uh, they're human and watching down the lake, and there is a reflection.、Mm-hmm. And I think I was tree. My body is the tree, and my hand was the the、um, branch of the tree.、Uh-huh. And I am holding the water. So、there is like a thousand different way of reading my paintings, and I would like to read that、uh, audience to see whatever they feel like, and I wanted to and then the audience enjoy what they see.、Mm-hmm. That's nice. So I just want them to relax and enjoy. That's cool.、Um, since you had to experience the.、Uh... I guess you call it culture shock of a、uh, learning, the, learning United States culture, American culture as as a contrast to Japan. What what、mm-hmm. advice would you give to other foreign students if they make the trip to the United States and studying art within the United States and how to adapt? Um. First, they have to expect they can. Um. Um, um, uh, America, in America, people speak up. So I think they have to. We have to speak up what exactly we want to do, rather than、um, suggesting that the the things you wanted to do.、Um, In Japan,、uh, we do、um, guessing game. That's how I call.、Um, nobody say exactly what they want until the other person figure out. That's like the polite way of communicating with、right. people.、Uh-huh. But here in America, we say what we want. 
And if it's not good for you, they're going to say no. And that's totally fine. So I was, I had a hardest time to、uh, understanding that culture, that conversation、uh -huh. way. But so I was afraid to give my opinion for a couple of months, even probably almost a year. And I was hoping somebody would understand me what I wanted to do. That's not gonna happen.、Uh, <laughs> sure. Everybody, I will strongly suggest that t h e start speaking up.、Uh, that is to adapt in America. I think it's something you have to adjust to as well. I mean, it's, it's always gonna be a, a, an effort for anybody to go through that process.、So. And you did、yeah. very well. I did. I tried. Now, <laughs> if I go back to Japan, I'm, I'm just one of the stranger dogs. <laughs> no. Well, we look forward to seeing your work at the Crary, and、uh, thank you for taking the time to,、uh, to talk to us, and、uh, we look forward to seeing you. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm really excited. Awesome. <laughs> The Beyond Culture is the,、uh, the biggest painting I ever done in, in my whole artist career.、Um, this piece was、uh, spray as a zigzag screen, and I am、um, hoping、um, you're able to. See the, the image with more dynamic way. Seeing the big thing, big self display, and、uh, help eye moves go through entire image.、Um, I've been painting the cherry blossom tree for almost two years.、Uh -huh. And I'm really into the reflection of. Uh, the trees and、uh, nature, s and I feel a lot of movement and moment and sound, even smell of nature from that piece. And I put all of my energy to it. And I don't want to, personally, I don't want to explain the, what exactly image I was painting for that specific piece. Because I wanted every single person to have a different way of viewing my piece. But I was、uh, putting all of my technique I w a n t in Edinburgh for four years. I was trying, specifically trying to put every single technique, every single change I passed, looking from all of my portfolio in the last four years, and put into that one piece. So it's like one of the,、um, it has every single change or bridge I passed in four years in that piece using cherry blossom subject matter. Nice.